Charlie with the Oracle Applications Users Group. Welcome everyone to this preview of Oracle eBusiness Tax, Proactively Manage Compliance Risks Using Tax Rules, an OAUG training day workshop that will be delivered at Collaborate 15. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple housekeeping items. You will be on mute throughout the presentation. You can type your questions into the question box in your control panel at any time. Once the presentation has concluded, I will read the questions back so the presenter can respond. We are recording this session and it will be available online shortly. We encourage you to share it with your friends and colleagues you think may be interested. I'll be introducing Alex Fateni in just a moment, but I'd like to give you a brief overview of Collaborate 15. Collaborate 15 Technology and Applications Forum for the Oracle community is where Oracle Power users and IT decision makers find practical solutions for today and strategies for tomorrow. Created by and for users, Collaborate 15 provides a personalized experience alongside functional and technical insight from other experienced professionals. Collaborate 15 is jointly presented by IOUG, the OAUG, and Quest, along with our partners, Oracle. We have over 1,250 sessions available for you at Collaborate 15. There are over 270 eBusiness Suite sessions, more than 65 Hyperion, and more than 65 Primavera sessions. Whether technical or functional, rookie or pro, we've got something for you. We're adding new learning formats this year, the Exploration Series, which will feature a focus on EV tax and also allocations and cross charges, builds consecutive sessions to take you through the whole experience. We have six Power Hour Deep Dive sessions, which will feature breakouts and new ways to network and share knowledge. Oracle will be offering Meet the Expert sessions Monday through Wednesday, Oracle Product Roadmap sessions on Monday, Oracle Proactive Support sessions, Oracle Demo Grounds in the Exhibitor Showcase, and Oracle User Experience Usability Lab. We have over 20 GEO meetings and 40 SIG meetings, as well as a wellness program featuring Go With The Flow Yoga presented by ChainFist, a Hyperion Connect reception, women in technology Q&A panel, and a groovy 60s party. You'll be sure to meet all your friends at Collaborate. Collaborate is dedicated to putting you in contact with your partners to help your organization discover new products and solutions to maximize its technology investment. We'll have over 200 exhibitors providing information, education, and demonstration. For our keynote, I'd like to introduce Eric Wall. He's an artist, an entrepreneur, and author of the best-selling business book, Unthink. He will be painting live on stage while leaving us to break out of routine thinking and pass back into the creative way we were all born. He was named by the editors of Meetings Net Magazine as one of the top speakers of 2014. Oracle will be sending Mark Sunday, their CIO and Senior VP, to talk about the way their technology is impacting the industry. We'll also have a featured session by Rimini Street. That's a lot of content to explore and get excited about. I encourage you to visit the link on the stage to peruse all the available sessions and start building an agenda. Even if you haven't registered yet, you can start getting your schedule organized and sharing it with your colleagues. And now I'd like to introduce your speaker, Alex Fateni of Fateni Enterprises. Hi. <coughs> Hello. My name is uh, Alex Fateni. Uh, I'm a professional accountant by uh, training, but have been uh, working on uh, Oracle uh, solutions for some 20 plus years. My background includes uh, developing and uh, delivering uh, solutions for international globalizations and uh, also e-business e tax. Um, I was responsible for its, uh, its, its uh, initial designs uh, prior to uh, its rollout into release 12. Uh, I'm also currently the product architect for Indirect Tax Auditor by Absolute Technologies. Uh, prior to 2006, uh, I was a, uh, uh, as, a as an independent uh, developer and uh, uh, entrepreneur. I was director of Oracle applications for Release 11i and Release 12 globalizations, regional data administrator, divisional controller, lecturer, and author, and still do uh, lectures uh, occasionally at various colleges. My subject uh, today is that I do uh, each year. Um, I have done for the last uh, uh, couple of years. And this course is focused on e-business tax and the rule system. And I want to talk to you today about what that course will contain. One of the things that I, I like to do is kind of 
uh, lay out a, an environment in which we have uh, an atmosphere of learning and discussion. And uh, part of that uh, discussion on that course is understanding truly the connection between the real world and Oracle eBusiness tax and tax rules. So what we'll be discussing is, is uh, areas of uh, understanding the, the role of buyer, seller, and agent within the context of the e-business tax system, so the who of e-business tax. And understanding that will give us a much better sense of how we would go about uh, building solutions uh, around the engine and uh, its capabilities, which are far-reaching and uh, quite uh, deep. We also want to know what the context is in terms of the transaction life cycles, and that includes areas like sales and purchases and intercompany transactions, movements of goods between inventory organizations and so forth. All those life cycle transactions are important and when does tax uh, get fired, how it works within the context of a transaction, what will and won't work, which is the most important thing, and help you to devise uh, truly local solutions for your own compliance needs. Where do we expect to focus? We expect to focus on areas like uh, the special areas, like movement of goods, inco terms, travel expenses, or delivery of services. Where do we have these needs? Do we have it just in goods and services, or is it in these contexts in which we have specific needs that localization, uh, local tax requirements, legislation requires that we uh, meet certain compliance requirements? The other topic that we want to cover uh, in the course is when do we need to apply these new rules and end old rules? How do we handle getting these, these uh, new rules in place and when do we make sure that those rules will be enacted so that the old and new rules will smoothly transfer between one group and another? The other context in which we will be uh, learning is the compliance requirements. How important are these? How do we go about translating these Com often complex legislative requirements into real-world rules that can be applied to transaction lifecycle. Where do we stand with respect to our need for compliance risk and balance that against what we can do from a, an automation point of view versus what we can do from the point of view of uh, our manual processes and so on? And how much can we move into the automation world and reduce our reliance on uh, on uh, compliance uh, uh, by a checklist. We'll also address how do we uh, handle all of these within the, the uh, depth and breadth of what e-business e tax can do. So we're going to address your need for tax risks and exposures. We're going to look at the context of uh, dealing with compliance requirements using something called use cases. And I I think you will be familiar for us, uh, for some, but not for everybody. But the audience, which we should include um, persons uh, like tax directors or uh, IT uh, business systems analysts, will understand and talk to each other and give you a sense of common language, if you will, between the two sets and have a skill set that we can understand and use to effect in uh, rapidly being able to deploy new tax rules. We're also then translating that into the tax jurisdiction rates and rules within the context of the e-business tax functionality and through experience develop that uh, um, uh, more uh, efficient way of uh, deploying and implementing rules and monitoring them at the end of the day. So what do we need to do to meet compliance needs for your company? Understanding your organization's tax compliance needs is important. And you probably know it from the point of view of being able to articulate it on a legislative level, but how do you then take that and move that into the, the world of uh, tax automation through e-business tax? Well, first of all, content. What country is important that we handle specific transactions that are unique to those local countries? And what are the general tax rules that we could so separating the special from the, from the standard would be important. What are the compliance requirements for indirect tax in each country? Specifically, what are we required to report and pay within the context of the transaction life cycles? What are the most common transactions that we must handle in tax? 
So by common transactions, we're probably thinking about invoices and how those invoices are going to be uh, uh, entered, changed, updated, and so forth. How does it work uh, when we have uh, differences between the tax that the supplier is going to be uh, entering on the one hand and our PO and presentation of that transaction uh, within the concept of the purchase order and then on through receiving and so forth. So within that total transaction lifecycle, what are the most common transactions we must handle for tax and how are we going to best deliver tax uh, content and calculations accuracy uh, to that particular transaction lifecycle. So what is our organization's level of awareness and priorities for indirect tax and risk? So we're moving then uh, from uh, an environment in which we're really playing catch up with auditors and so forth and we have no time to handle uh, uh, the, the future. Are we moving towards a place in uh, the corporate appetite for managing that risk and exposure and handling it uh, in a proactive manner so that we end up with something that will help us reduce our tax risk and exposures and therefore reduce our audit risks in the other end. So what is our transaction uh, life cycle? Uh, automation uh, strategy. Do we have one? Are we looking at reducing the cost per transaction? Um, perhaps we're doing this in other areas where we're handling uh, uh, imaging uh, to reduce uh, manual t handling of uh, transaction documentation. Then per perhaps we should also be doing that with uh, tax and how do we reduce our costs of uh, delays, queues, and other um, uh, things using best practices and also do business tax. So then once we know that, how do we go about building a tax compliance strategy that meets all these requirements? Well, here's what we're going to do in that day. My intent is to provide uh, a little bit of expertise, some knowledge about this in their area, and some experiences that are specific through sample scenarios throughout the day. So these, in, these information uh, and, and data will help you in your implementation when you go about entering um, and, and developing a tax solution for your, for your own transaction lifecycle. So how are we going to do this? We're going to look at how we collect the tax compliant requirements to help more easily define those configurations. So that means uh, using uh, areas like the tax, uh, methods like the tax use case to develop a detailed understanding of each, each compliance requirement and uh, developing that along with all of the other instances that would provide you with specific solutions for each of the areas where we're going to be addressing tax uh, solutions, tax automation. We're going to use that to uh, develop and define structures that are resilient and extensible. What do we mean by that? It means that our solution isn't going to change the next day because we have a slightly different rule. We're going to have some uh, understanding about how we can collect information and uh, use it in such a way that uh, we can implement rules that we can simply add new, uh, new material to within a single context and then that context will be able to uh, drive a variety of uh, related rules and uh, requirements for the local tax or for, global, for uh, various global solutions. Um, how do we design uh, rules that are more easily maintained? So the main secret to that is the less sometimes is more. And we're going to be looking at how we can develop and uh, uh, understand better ways of designing rules that in fact will help us uh, produce and manage fewer rules. We're going to leverage this new knowledge tips and tricks to build better rules. So that means that in uh, some, some uh, paper scenarios we're going to understand uh, how we can handle specific solutions and how that solution can be, if you will, uh, generalized to be used in Lima so that you understand the context in which this data is stored and how you can perhaps uh, yeah, use that to develop reports uh, internally and uh, do a better job of, uh, uh, of reporting uh, local information where required, but also to give you a better understanding of what the limits are as well as the um, extensive uh, uh, capabilities of the EV tax uh, functionality. I'm going to talk uh, about some survey tools and products that will help, help you in uh, EV tax maintenance. So uh, reports, monitoring, 
transaction uh, loads, etc. So things like that are going to be something that we'll we'll talk about, and and the context in which we can uh, use those will also be identified. And throughout this, we're going to also provide you with implementable workarounds, some personalizations, and even customizations that if you have the appetite for in your particular uh, upgrade or fresh uh, install solution will be you can be used to uh, best um, uh, handle specific situations where not all the information you need is available. So what are these uh, uh, the contexts in which we'll be uh, learning? We're going to try and deal with this within what I call the best practices uh, building blocks. So rules are about uh, trying to encapsulate uh, legislation in uh, actionable uh, information, and that actionable information can be used by the rule engine to uh, actually calculate tax for you. So what methods can be used to collect and validate the indirect tax requirements? You know, what can we do and how can we best do it? How can I design rules that are sustainable? So again, what we're trying to do is build the, uh, uh, rules that are going to be uh, used in the long term and not something that will have to be changed the next day when uh, even the slightest change in that legislative uh, implementation uh, would require a, a change in the, in the in the design and the rules themselves. What options do I have to build rules that work across all transactions in both the quote cash and procure to pay transaction life cycles? By this we mean um, in 11i we're used to building uh, point solutions if you will, one for AR, one for AP. And in uh, EV tax, it runs across everything. Uh, can we, in fact, uh, limit it? Uh, and in what circumstances would, would it be uh, advisable to limit particular rules to particular transactions? And in what circumstances do you want to have a broader solution that allows you, from that sustainability perspective, to handle a, a broad variety of situations that are both AR and AP? In other words, both transaction life cycles can be satisfied by the same rule. Now, how can I reduce the number of drivers that I'm using and the rules that have to be built in order to meet my organization's compliant needs? And so looking at how that works from, a, from the point of view of a kind of a, a, a process life cycle, uh, an analytical life cycle is we uh, assess risk, we develop use cases that we will implement, we will identify and design uh, something according to a strategy that we have on, on global as well as local tax policy. We will implement, that means building, testing, and validating. And then we'll go on to monitor whether we've got something and perhaps there's some adjustments we need to do afterwards. So that whole, li that whole business uh, uh, systems uh, analysis lifecycle works just as well in this context as it does in anything else. What are the benefits to the participant? Well, first of all, um, I'm looking for people uh, uh, who will join us who perhaps are in the compliance side, who, uh, whose job it is is to uh, have a role that uh, requires uh, a deep understanding of the tax compliance, indirect tax compliance. And so the compliance officer, whether it be the, the senior officer or uh, 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 an analyst in that department, uh, those people uh, are the audience that I would like to uh, attend and uh, get a better understanding of uh, e-business tax rates and rules in the context of having to meet the compliance requirements. Who knows those compliance requirements best? Well, of course, the compliance officer. And uh, that person should really be part of the team that does the implementation of any uh, indirect tax solution. We also look for business systems analysts, perhaps within IT or within the business side itself. Uh, th their role, obviously, is uh, to have a deep understanding of the solution set uh, itself, which is, uh, you know, we're using eBiz context, then uh, they provide a common language or understanding between the compliance officer, the end user, which are the data entry staff, design and implement better rules that encapsulate uh, compliance needs. And this ultimately is what we expect to do to enable automation for, from, for tax. So at this point, uh, I'm open to questions.
Hello? Thank you, Alex. We do have a few questions in. The first is, will there be labs? There won't be hands-on labs. Um, the reason is, of course, we have a limited amount of time. The typical course takes uh, two to three days, uh, sometimes four, depending on how deep we're going in and covering a lot of scenarios. So uh, I also offer um, uh, workshops and uh, training sessions that are uh, between three and four days long. And uh, those are um, uh, both end user and master task courses uh, for uh, people who are interested in going deeper, and those do include labs. The next question, will we receive materials? Yes, we're going to receive uh, a, a set of materials uh, that I'll give to each user on a flash drive. Uh, that flash drive will include the course um, material that uh, will be presented during that day, uh, some additional um, material that has been accumulated over time that provides some solution set material. My past uh, papers will also, uh, some of those will be on there that are relevant to this part of the course. So uh, I'm hoping to provide um, a fair amount of information that's a good takeaway that you can read after the fact and uh, get some uh, a better in-depth understanding based on uh, this one day course. We have one more for you. Will you be covering all countries? Uh, I will be covering uh, solutions that cover uh, most countries and the more uh, typical issues in countries. I won't have time in one day to uh, cover all of the country solutions, but we will be covering areas like how do we build a VAT and, or uh, a GST, which are uh, value-added tax or um, uh, taxes that have recoverability in them. Uh, I will be covering uh, sales tax scenarios such as ones in the, in the U.S. and we'll be covering some sort of corner cases that are a hybrid of both. That's all the questions we currently have. So let's talk about what's next. Alex has given you a, an insightful look at his workshop and I'm sure you want to get registered. So this is how you find his course. It's um, going to be held Sunday, April 12th at Mandalay Bay at Collaborate 15. It's an all-day course from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. When you're getting registered, select the workshop, and it'll add the charge to your registration fee. The next steps to registration are simple and quick. It's a link on the site. We do have several options available, and we encourage you to book soon as our room block does fill up. At the end of your hotel reservation, you will receive an acknowledgement number. Keep that handy. When you enter that number in the registration process, you'll receive a $200 discount. If you go to collaborate.oug.org slash registration, you'll be able to select all your ancillary events, like Alex's workshop or other training day events, and be able to add additional guests to your registration fees. Make sure you check your membership status as members always receive the best rate. If there's a group of four of more of you, make sure you contact registration at OUG and just find your trip. We have your spot. Go to collaborate.oug.org slash registration slash justify. And again, OUG members always receive the best rates on top of notch education. The conversation has already started, so don't wait. Thanks very much, Alex, and thanks to our attendees for your time. Have a great day. Thank you.